Welcome to Coco's Corner. I am the huge one, Dave Coco from CocoSports.com or KOCOSports.net. It takes you to the same place. It's where the world comes to kick ass, your home for combat sports, and above all, where it's okay to be a passionate fan. This is our weekly Impact Wrestling a review show. As always, we ask you win, loss, or tie. What did you think of the show? All right, so getting into it, um, first I want to apologize. I missed last week's Impact Wrestling review because I was in and out of the hospital, and by the time I was ready to do it, it was already Royal Rumble, so I apologize to Impact. But last week we had um, Feast or Fired, and I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it a win. Now this week, I don't know, I'm, I'm in the range of tie and win, I'm going to give it a win just because it built up to next week. Next week, you're really excited to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to give it a win. It's definitely not a perfect show. Um, if I let the negativity eat at my dark, dying black heart that looks like a raisin, um, I probably could say tie. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a win because it, do, it did make me interested about next week. All right, so let's break this down. Um, it starts off with a promo. Um, you have Bo uh, Bobby Roode come out with the TNA championship, even though he's not the championship because last week, I guess he just kept it the whole time. What a jerk. Um, last week's show ended with uh, Bobby Lashley getting beat up by the beatdown club. Um, Kurt Angle and Bobby Roode come out and save him. Then Bobby Roode looks at the title and it goes cuts off the air. So what what happened last week? The Bobby Roode's like, ah, I'm just going to keep this till next week. What a jerk, Bobby Roode. Um, but Bobby Roode comes out with the title. He calls out. Uh, Bobby Lashley explains how the title was stolen from him by Eric Young. They say they want a match right now. And uh, by the way, Bobby Lashley, nice, so nice soul jacket, man. <laughs> Bobby Lashley wears some of the best friggin' threads. Uh, but Bo Bo Bobby, Bobby Lashley says, all right, we'll do it right now. Ask for a referee. Out comes Austin Aries to brag about his briefcase because he's the one that got the world title shot. And then from there, MVP comes out. And it leads to a four-way with um, a bunch of wrestlers later that we'll get into. Um, it would be MVP, Aries, Rude, and Lashley. So it, it, it's kind of a decent beginning, but at the same time, it, you know, you're living in this kayfabe universe. Why didn't he just give the belt back right away when it went off the air? And the second thing is, it's I think they're giving away too much, and... I don't know. I, that's just my opinion, but we'll see. I never thought giving away too much would be a problem, but then it goes to the knockout championship, and what a what a relief of fresh air. Just women on a national stage busting their ass, um, just doing a great job. You have Madison Rain, Gail Kim, uh, Taryn Terrell. I love all three of these women, and they did a they had a great match, beating the hell out of each other, and they're beautiful women. But putting some effort into it, put it, making a match worthy of women's pro wrestling. So I found it to be uh, pretty entertaining. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Taryn Terrell does keep the title. And it kind of makes it interesting because TNA is doing something I enjoy where it's either a division or... Yeah, we'll just talk about division. Division where there's multiple storylines going at once. And the title means something, but also you have Awesome Kong going against the new girl. And to me, I just find it to be really good and really entertaining. Um, I really enjoy all of uh, women's wrestling. Not divas, but women's wrestling. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Next, Tommy Dreamer comes out and cuts a promo. And I, I, I love Tommy Dreamer. I, I grew up just being a huge ECW fan. Um, if it wasn't for ECW, I probably wouldn't be a wrestling fan today. <clears throat> um, I, I just absolutely love Tommy Dreamer. I always rooted for him. But I think TNA uses him in the wrong way. He, he always comes out like as this old lovable uncle Tommy and uncle Tommy's like, let me tell you and fix your problems. Why this is important. Um, he, he went from, you know, this really hardcore legend underdog. He went from Bruce Willis and die hard to, Hey, where the fucking your guidance counselor. Let me explain something. Um, then Eric Young comes out. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of Eric Young being a heel, and because I love Eric Young, and everyone loves Eric Young. 
but he's pulling it off so well. It's like seeing an actor play a totally different part, and he's nailing it. At first, you're really nervous. Especially, this happens in Hollywood a lot. You're like, what the hell? Brokeback Mountain's going to be the Joker? I don't see it. Well, <laughs> and, and then, you know, Joker fucking is an amazing role. Um, that's how I feel with Eric Young right now. I'm like, we love you, Eric Young. You can't be a bad guy. But this, you know, it's been, what, maybe a month now? And I think he's pulling it off pretty well. Um, him not being inside the beatdown club but always being with them kind of makes him look a little stupid, but I guess that's part of his character. But I, I really enjoy Eric Young. I really enjoy where it's going. Um, but me, I, I miss lovable Eric Young. But, you know, he's doing a lot better this time as a heel than his last run as a heel. If anyone remembers that back in the day, his first run as a heel was, oh, that was god-awful. Then they go to another segment, and I love Magnus, and I'm so glad Magnus is back to being Magnus. He's not blaming the internet for everything. He's not fucking kissing Bram's ass. He's just fucking a great pro wrestler who fucking wants to be the best wrestler in the world, and that's all we need. Uh, I, I love Ma Magnus. And 2013 was the most improved wrestler of the year. And in 2014, he was just like, what the fuck happened to your career? It looks like 2015, he's get he's got back on track. It looks like he's starting to get rhythm. It looks like he's starting to become the Magnus of old. And th that's what we want. We don't want Magnus to be a joke. And I know he had a lot of stuff going on in his personal life. Marriage, kids, love and marriage. Uh, but I'm just glad to see something that resembles the Magnus of 2013. And, let, and let's all do Magnus a favor. If we could, just ignore 2014 ever happens. Um, next time you're going to be booked like that because of a situation, Magnus, just stay off television. No Magnus is better than 2014 Magnus. But I'm glad in 2015, it seems like he's going back to his roots of just being a great wrestler who wants to fucking put on a great match. Now, this is a bit weird. He goes to Bram. I I don't fucking get it. Some people love Bram. I'm like, why? Why does Bram get this? And people are like, well, he's dating Charlotte or married to Charlotte or once sucked Ric Flair's balls off in a parking lot. That's not enough for me. I'm sorry. I don't care if he's been inside fucking Nature Girl, okay? What I care about is I've never found this guy fucking entertaining ever. He just seems like a big, fat, fucking fake phony. Oh, yeah. A uh, phony. Um, I, I don't fucking get it. But this promo, it, it adds some healness to it. First off, it feels like Magnus is Magnus again. Um, and uh, That's good. And not only that, Bram, even though I don't like him, and I have no idea why anyone sees value in him. Anyone. I always ask, well, why do you like Bram? They're like, well, you know, he's banging fucking celebrity. Hey, who gives a shit? This ain't TMZ. But hopefully Bram could show his true colors because in 2014, he didn't show me shit. But he, they cut a promo where they're buddies. It went a bit long, but I think that added to it. Like, I, I could see a lot of people complaining that, oh, this segment went long. But I think if this segment didn't go long, it, it wouldn't have felt real um it felt real you know he's showing them the kids they're talking it seems like two friends it look lo it looks legit they're you know it, it's not a quick quick cut it, it just seems legit and then they seem to be buddy buddy and then magnus goes out he's like oh can't go out that door can't go out that door and then bram beats the fucking living piss out of him and i'm just like you know what fuck you bram <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, but no, uh, I enjoyed this segment a lot um, from a character I used to love to a character I hate to a character I've never respected. I was like, you know what? They pulled it off pretty good. And it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, does it make sense why Bram did it? I guess he's a has anger issues and he's dumb. I don't fucking know. You know, if I'm like, hey, look at me. I'm your buddy. We are a pal and we're going to become tag team champions together. Yeah, I'm going with, even if I hate that motherfucker, I, I give it a couple weeks. Like, okay, let's see. Tag team titles, let's see where this goes. But no, Bram's like, you know what? Fuck you. Beats the fucking living shit out of him. Hits him in the back of the head with a cue ball. And yeah, I, I don't know. TNA, I, I love you, but there's two things I noticed about this. 
Um, anyone that's ever worked security in a bar or any anyone that's ever been in a fight, there are some weapons that just kill a motherfucker. <laughs> Like, a cue ball. And we'll also talk about this with um, the Monsters Ball match, which I will not call a Monsters Ball match, a hardcore match. Um, trivia question. Why does nerd Dave, that's me, refuse to call it a, a Monsters Ball match? All these people that say I'm a TNA hater, why ain't it a Monsters Ball match? It's never a Monsters It hasn't been a Monsters Ball match in forever. It's only a hardcore match. But, you know... Oh, I'm just a fucking... Oh, I just hate TNA. All right, moving on. That's the trivia. That's how I know if you're real. That's I'm, I'm, gonna look, I'm looking you in the eye through this audio YouTube clip. I'm looking you straight in your soul. I'm like, oh, you're a TNA fan? Why wasn't that a Monsters Ball match? That's the trivia. That's to know if you're in the club, if you've been there since day one. It's easy to buy the day one t-shirts, but have you really been there from day one? And now, speaking of that, Monsters Ball. So that was a perfect segment. I didn't even know that was next. Monsters Ball. No. Uh -uh. Wrong. You're fucking wrong. You're always wrong. You can't make up a match and then just keep calling it. It's just a hardcore match. That's all it was. It wasn't a Monsters Ball match. End of fucking story. High five. Barry Horowitz. Mad props to anyone that wants to know why it's, knows why it's not a Monsters Ball match. Uh, the match gets along the way. Um, I don't know. Um, I have mixed feelings. I thought it was good, but at the same time, I think they've abused Monsters Ball matches. I think they're not even following the rules. I think Abyss at one time, I believe this in the bottom of my heart, I think Abyss at one time was the best big man in the business. Those days have passed. The character has passed. It, it's just, it's living in the past. And I usually really hate Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, but as of, as of late, I've you know, I've grown not to hate him. This was an enjoyable hardcore match, not a Monsters Ball match, but it was an enjoyable match. And then they bring out, what the fuck is that bat with goddamn spikes on it? Candice or something. Janice, that's it. Minus 10 for me. Um, they bring out Janice, and then they do the famous Janice spot where they throw it into the corner, and it just gets stuck in the turnbuckle. Now, here's the problem, TNA. <laughs> You have to make weapons somewhat believable. A cue ball to the back of someone's head crushes them. Where a beer bottle, okay, they're concussed and have a shitty fucking week. Um, and the same thing with Janice. Like, everyone knows that that's not going to happen. Thumbtacks, um, kendo sticks, chairs, tables. All right, you, you, you're, you're letting your imagination go. But then you're like, holy shit, that would kill someone. You're like, no, pump your brakes. No more. Can we please just retire Janice? I, I, I just I just want to, I just, no, just stop. Retire. Retire Janice. Retire Monsters Ball. Just have a hardcore match. I'd find it more enjoyable. It ends with everyone and their mother running in. You have the revolution. You have Matt Hardy. You have the wolves. And it ends with... Um, well, there's a lot of tax in the ring, but it ends with Jeff Hardy doing a swanton onto Abyss and getting the three counts. And, man, I, I just said, if you go back, go back to the $10 pay-per-views. Go back, go back. This is a perfect time to go back. Go back when they weren't on Spike TV and they were on Internet pay-per-views and then they were on, I think, Fox Sports Net or something like that. It was one of those smaller Fox channels. Man, during that time, during that time, like from the – from to five dollar, ten dollar pay per views to internet pay per views to Fox Sports to just arriving on Spike TV during that block of time, man, a bit Abyss was untouchable. It, it was just amazing. They hit his weaknesses. His character wasn't fucking stupid, and it was just amazing. Um, but yeah, Hogan came by, and it's just not the same. Um, I think people have. Fans of hardcore wrestling who don't watch many alternatives like Combat Zone, Big Japan, uh, will probably enjoy this a lot more than those who have experienced different hardcore wrestling and also remember EC ECW in its heyday. Um, it was a decent hardcore match, and I think a lot of people really would enjoy it. Uh, me, I thought it was eh thing. Then it comes back to uh, Rockstar Spud. 
and Mandrews, who won. Um, I was about to say tough enough. I apologize. The UK, the UK tough enough um, versus the Bromans uh, with DJ Z and Angela Love. It starts with a promo from EC3. I really enjoy EC3. I really enjoy Spud. And I know EC3, a lot of people have informed me he's injured. That's why he's wearing the cast. And that's why he's fighting Jeremy Borash because they want to keep him on TV. I hope EC3 heals up good because I, I, I really enjoy EC3. Um, I think he should be a main eventer. I think he should be right up there with a good heel title run. Um, and Spud, I love him. I don't know if I would ever want him to be X Division champion. But I find the feud to be pretty interesting. And it, next week, they both have to fight um, fucking Tyrus. I'm so bad with names. I apologize. And basically, it was a huge upset. The Rockstar Spud and Mandrews beat the Bromans. Um, I enjoyed the match a lot. And I hope they stay as a tag team. I, I really I really did enjoy it. And, it, and I find um, the feud to be interesting. I just hope EC3 gets healthy so that he doesn't ever have to fight Jeremy Borash again. <laughs> For the love of God, never make that happen again. Um, thank you. And then we get to our main offense. We have the TNA Heavyweight Championship match. MVP versus Austin Aries versus Bobby Roode versus Bobby Lashley. Um, there's shenanigans, run-ins, all that stuff, but it ends. It's a pretty decent match. It ends with... One hell of a spear by Bobby Lashley, and Austin Aries sells it the best. And all that, I know I get a bit nerdy, but it really is a factor. I, I know a lot of wrestling fans are like, oh, you get too nerdy. Um, the camera work. You know, these guys don't get the credit they deserve. Um, the producers, the camera work, the guys behind the scenes. I, I just thought the camera, the camera work for that finisher was absolutely amazing. Because uh, if the camera's in a wrong position, it looks horrible. Uh, but the, the camera looked absolutely amazing. It was a bit of a shock. So good job, cameraman. Massive spear by Lashley. And Austin Aries sells it like a million bucks. Uh, Bobby Lashley does win. And then Samoa Joe, Kenny King, the beatdown clan all run and beat the living piss out of them. And then Kurt Angle comes out with the chair. And they all run from Kurt Angle. It's a bit cheesy because you're like, well, I have five. You are five or six. You have five or six, but five of those dudes are almost dead, and you're with yourself by a chair. Okay, we'll look past that. They all leave the ring, and then Kurt Angle still hasn't announced his team, and I'm like, oh, I guess it's going to be a mystery. But it was just awkward because, you know, the commentary team's like, no, we still have time, and uh, he'll tell who the team is next. Um, it just was a bit awkward, and then the promos were awkward. Um, I just wish... It ended, and granted, you know, this is backseat booking at its finest. If it was me, I would have had to spear one, two, three. Beatdown Club comes in. Kurt Angle comes in. I, I like the faces on faces in the ring, heels, heels on, on the ramp. I love that a lot because if you're watching this for the first time, you got to remember it is on a new channel. It's the first couple months. You're also relaunching it. It's always good to identify who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And a bunch of good guys in a ring and a bunch of bad guys down on the ramp or on the floor. It just, it's the simplest visual way of saying, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. So if someone's watching it for the first time and are not sure, or if, you know, it's just the simplest way to tell who the good and bad guys are. So I really enjoyed that. And I just wish Kurt Angle grabbed the mic and be like, this, this is my team. Yeah. But instead it just went on for a little too long. Um, you know, it's supposed to be total nonstop action impact wrestling. And I just thought there was a little too much promos and not enough wrestling. And the end was a bit awkward and the beginning was a bit awkward, but there was really some good wrestling. So I'm still going to give it a win. All right, let's, let's see what, the world of live. Oh, and then one more thing I want to talk about news wise. I put a link in a doobly do. Um, oh, two things I want to talk about actually. One, I, I got mixed feelings. Jeff Hardy does a crazy bump off the cage. We all saw it on YouTube. And I know TNA has a really hard time um, because they have to do social media and get people pumped up, but there's spoilers out on the net. Um, would you have advertised, this is my question, because I, I got mixed feelings, would you have advertised the fall from Jeff Hardy? 
I said, there's a part of me that, and this is next week's event. Next week he falls off the cage. They already advertised it. Um, would you have advertised that? Does it seem scummy? Does it like, oh, well, they're not live. They're not in a position. I have mixed feelings about that. And also on Impact on CocoSports.net, the big news is Mickey James returns and Drew Galloway debuts as a TNA wrestling event in uh, Glasgow, Scotland. And I hope uh, Galloway, because he's a great wrestler. I, I've been watching him in the indie days and uh, over there in the European tour. And Drew, Gal Drew Galloway is an amazing athlete, and hopefully he gets to show off. And Mickey James coming back is great, because at one time, Mickey James, a lot of uh, fans thought she was the best. And that's the thing. With the Jeff Hardy, with Mickey James returning, with uh, you know Drew Galloway going, there's spoilers, there's internet, they're not live, and this is something that handicaps them. Do you report on it on impacts official site like they are because i think they handled mickey james and and um drew galloway perfectly and but to me the jeff hardy thing i don't know and that's why i'm asking you if you were tna do you advertise stuff that would possibly be spoilers just to get a little tease and jeff hardy from all accounts that i know of and i've seen the head it, lo it looked horrible um or, or the you know the fall and do you advertise that? I guess maybe if you ask Jeff Hardy for position, I don't know. But I know Impact Wrestling is hard because you have to you have to get people interested in your show. You can't talk down to them. And with the internet days, it's hard to keep a secret. It just felt weird that they were advertising. Like, I agree with Mickey James and Drew Galloway. I know some people on the internet don't. I agree with that. you got to keep it interesting. It's going to be all over the net anyway. You don't talk down to your fans. I agree with that. Now, the Jeff Hardy thing, that's, that's something different. They're advertising a guy that possibly got hurt, most likely got hurt, probably healthy now. Hopefully they got his permission. Um, do you think that's okay? Do you think that's bad? Because I try to stay away from spoilers, but at the same time, how do, how do you not know who returned? How do you not know about the spell? It's hard to be a passionate fan online and still not know all the spoilers. Um, you know, a spoiler here and there is going to sneak in. So I guess my question of the day for you, besides win, loss, and tie, is do you think what they did is okay? Are you a fan of it? Do you think it's gone too far? Do you think, no, they should stay kayfabe around? Because when it comes to Mickey James and um, Galloway, uh, I, I'm a big fan of that. But when it comes to Jeff Hardy, I was like, eh, this is kind of dirty, but I understand why they did it. So I got mixed feelings about it. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Let's go check out some live comments if there are any. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Andy Paps on the Facebook says, thanks, Dave. EY makes a better actor than The Miz. LOL. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a really talented guy. Uh, the, the word elite had so much potential, but then Hogan era fucked everything up. LOL. Uh, given an impact to win, the whole show was action-packed. It's a two-by-four, Dave. Didn't they use to lo lock wrestlers in rooms with no food, water, and lights? Congratulations, Andy Paps. You've been there from day one before the Monsters Ball match. Yep, it was ridiculous and stupid, but you know what? It's your ridiculous and stupid thing. All right, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. What happened in Fantasy Wrestling Draft for TNA? That is... I am gonna. That's from Friend Yelly. Friend Yelly, nice shirt. Appreciate it. Internet infantry shirt. I will be doing a Q and A just for Friend Yelly's question. We will be doing it within 24 to 48 hours. We will um, do a fantasy wrestling show where people can put down their draft picks. So that's where it happened. I just got to get with uh, Forsaken. So it will happen within 24 to 48 hours unless something absolutely horrible happens. Uh, BGC Fan 17 says, "What do you think of Drew Holloway debuting and TNA and Mickey James returning?" I can't wait for Mickey versus Awesome Kong. Um, yeah, I just hope Mickey is back to 100%. At one time, a lot of fans thought she was the best wrestler in the world. I think a lot of that has gone gone down. Um, I love, I absolutely love Awesome Kong. I, I think it adds so much credibility to TNA's uh, women's roster. And yeah, I would like to see Mickey James versus Awesome Kong, but I want to see a Mickey James going at it 100%. I, I really do, and I, I would enjoy that. Uh, Drew Holloway, I'm really excited because um, I, I believe I believe he he got a you know a shitty deal in WWE, and hopefully he could shine. And I know a lot of people are like, "Oh fuck, WWE guys going to TNA," and I, and I'm one of those guys. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be like, "Oh no." 
Uh, but if it's a guy that didn't get a fair shake and he's going to get a fair shake and he's young and he's talented and he could help and maybe change his character a little bit, then I'm on board. Like to me, EC3, yes. Kurt Angle, yes. Christian, yes. Uh, the Dudleys, yes. The Hardys, no. Uh, Booker T, no. Kevin Nash, no. Hulk Hogan, no. It just depends if they help or not. And I mean, yeah, you can be like, well, well, they help by doing this, this, and this. The bottom line is, it was a 1.0 without those guys. And with those guys, it was a 1.0. Uh, it was the same. And not only that, but they, uh, I don't know. It, it really just depends if they come in and bust their ass. Like, Bully Ray came in and bust his ass. He changed his view. He changed what he was. Uh, EC3. What I don't want is a bunch of fucking fat cats just taking a goddamn paycheck sitting around doing absolutely fucking nothing. And I don't think he'll do that. I could be wrong, but only time will tell. Thank you, BG's fan 17 for the question. Uh, Peter... Peter Gillian, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. I would, you leave so many comments. I think I should learn how to pronounce your name right. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. Uh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Jeff Hardy is one crazy motherfucker. Lashley, oh boy. They, the way he was flipping Aries in the air, what a power. I love Bram because he's good on the mic. He looks really crazy. Hell, when I watch him, I don't even think he is acting. All right. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter also goes on to say, Drew added some muscle since his WWE days. I didn't know... He is that big. Underrated talent and WWE wasted like many others. About Jeff, he had an interview, I think, three days ago after the fall and was fine. Looked worse than it was. Yeah, it looked really bad. If you see the clip on YouTube, it, it looked really, really bad. All right, so appreciate all the live comments. Thank you for the four likes. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Check out CocoSports.net. Um, I will be doing a fantasy wrestling show. That's for the most loyal of uh, viewers that are in the fantasy wrestling league. And I will be doing a friend Yelly stump the idiot. He has five questions. I'll answer them because he bought an internet infantry shirt. You can buy an internet infantry shirt and have your own stump the idiot. Five questions that I'll answer on video. I know it's not much, but at least you get a shirt out of the deal. Um, but yeah, go to cocosports.net. Look to the right-hand column be like, wow, that's one sexy shirt. I bet you women and men, if you are a woman or into men, you're like, the opposite, this, just to add, no, forget that. That's not fair. We, li we live in 2015. Just people will find you attractive. You're like, hey, look at this. I'm not so attractive. And then you put the internet infantry shirt on and people are like, wow, what a sexy freaking beast. All right, there's no guarantees. The only guarantee I could give you is if you buy a shirt, you know, it will be delivered to you, and I'll do a fave. I'll do a stump the idiot with your five questions. All right, boom, 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 boom. Stalling for time, seeing if there's any more questions. If not, uh, boom, 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 boom. all right. And do what do you think? Do you th oh here's a question. All right, do you think TNA will do pay per views again? Um, I don't know. I imagine they'll still have one or two pay-per-views. I don't know what their pay-per-view deal is. Um, it might have changed since Destination American. It might have ran out. I don't know what the situation is. If it was me, I would do zero pay-per-views or one or two pay-per-views. Uh, that's just me. I would, I, would do, I would do everything to make Destination American a, a success. I would focus on my television. I would stop doing house shows. I would try to stay in New York. I know they're coming to Orlando, coming back to Orlando. Um, the problem with Orlando is there's just too much entertainment, and they have NXT. It's hard to draw in Orlando because, well, it's the vacation spot, uh, one of the top vacation spots in the world. Um, but, yeah, I know they're coming back to Orlando. But if I was them, I would try to stay in New York as much as possible. I know there's haters that say they're a 10-inch drop, and if that's the case, that's just sad. And then I would do, just because I'm greedy, I would have it, <laughs> and I want to see him again, I would have to do one pay-per-view in Japan and one pay-per-view in England and just wrap it up. Um, but I don't know. They'll just I don't know their pay-per-view contract deal. I apologize, but I'm just giving you an answer. If it was me, I would try to stay away from pay-per-views. I know next week is supposed to be like a pay-per-view, like a free pay-per-view, so it should be interesting. And I think they did a great job. Um, sometimes I'm a bit negative and nitpicking and all that, but I think they did a great job pumping you up for uh, next week's uh, show. 
So hopefully, and the last week they got they got a little boost in viewership. So hopefully that continues. All right, boop boop boop. Check it one more time for comments. Thank you for all those left comments, Peter BGC fan, Colin Colin Day, friend Yelly. Uh, Colin Day, I don't think I read your comment. I apologize. Let me read it right now. Slight win. Better than anything that WWE did in the last few weeks except NXT. Uh, I could, I, I don't know. That that three-way at, at the pay-per-view is pretty good. Uh, I know a lot of people ain't giving it credit. Uh, it was Brock, Cena, and Rollins. That three-way, I, I think, was a decent match. NXT, if you don't count NXT, yeah. I would say it's better than everything they did except that three-way match. Uh, that three-way match was pretty impressive. But besides that, yeah, WWE has been in a shitter. But I guess they want to prove us wrong or I don't know. Would you have EC uh, – this is from Andy Paps on Facebook. Would you have EC3 and Tyrus join forces with the Beatdown Club? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, just because – EC3 is his own thing. Beatdown Club is his own thing. Maybe have a couple side storylines where EC3 pays the Beatdown Club to do stuff, you know, because he's supposed to be this super rich guy. Maybe that, but actually join it, it just seems – I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Plus they have, I think, too many just hanger oners already. I think they need to focus on it. Um, the revolution, BDC, a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. And, you know, they're trying to build a new, basically a whole new company. So I understand what they're doing. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be careful and you don't want it to be Virgil joining the NWO moments. All right. Thank you all for the live comments. If I missed any, I do apologize. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. We'll be back within 24 hours. I have uh, Stump the Idiot, which is a Q&A qu show. Uh, we'll have fantasy wrestling, which is more basically just uh, for very, very select few viewers. And, you know, we'll probably do a lot more shows, so look forward to it. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out CocoSports.net, K-O-C-O Sports.net. With that, I am over. Bum, 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 bum.